Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part four of taking your Access backend database and turning it into a database server. And since this is part four, if you haven't watched parts one, two, three, well, you know what to do. Go do it. Go watch it and come on back. All right. So in yesterday's video, we got it to where we're putting commands in the command table. And now we have to go over to the server to actually read those commands and do something with them. All right, I click get customers. It puts that in there. I'm going to abort and we'll take a look at the command table. And there it is. It's sitting right in there. All right, so now the server has to pick that up and run it. Okay, let's go work on that now. All right, open up the back end. And here's the server form just sitting there, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use a timer event in this form to run every, let's say, second. You can run it more or less frequently if you want to. I think a second's about perfect for me. So let's go into here. Now, the first thing I want to do is activate that timer when the user turns the server on. And again, you can set this to true and run it in the on open event if you want to, but I'm going to make it so it's a manual thing for now during development. I don't always want it starting up and running. So this guy's after update event. Let's go to events and then after update. All right, and we're right down here. We can get rid of most of the stuff in here. We don't need a lot of this stuff. This customer contact button, all this stuff. Get rid of all that. I'm going to leave the form load. We can get rid of you. Okay, so in the running checkbox, we're going to say if running, that means we've checked it on, then interval equals 1,000. I'm setting the timer interval for the form to 1,000 milliseconds, which is one second. So the timer event's going to run every second. Else me dot timer interval equals zero that turns off the timer event. Okay. All right. Now we need to actually program that timer event. So again, let's go to the forms properties this time, find on timer, which is way down here. And what are we going to do in the form timer event? Well, for right now, let's just do status waiting for commands and then we'll put the current time in there. Okay. So save it, come back out here. Let's reopen it. And yeah, I got code that slides it down. I'm going to move the window. Down. There we go. Okay. And now when I turn the, the timer on, it's just going to sit there waiting for commands. Every second, you'll see that waiting for commands. All right. Now we actually have to make it look for commands. So let's turn that back off. Always turn off any timer events whenever you go to work on it. Because if you leave this timer running, all right, I get to ask this one all the time. If you come back in here and you start doing stuff. Right, you put it like this, and oh, look at, see, syntax error. Because that timer event is running on the form, and it's gonna interfere with you working with, if, if the VBA editor is acting weird, you've got a timer event running somewhere, okay? I get asked that all the time. So make sure you disable any timer events before you go into this. So now you gotta close and reopen the form so that it, it clears all that out. Okay, so in that form timer event right here, all right, what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna need a record set. So dim RS as a record set. This, this one works best with a record set. All right, status waiting for commands. Now we're gonna set RS equals current DB dot open record set. What are we looking for? Select star from command T where, I'm gonna continue the next line, where command completed equals false. So the command isn't finished yet. And I want to order by command date time. So if there are multiple commands in there, I want you to execute the lowest one. Now, the way that this is set up right now is the, uh, the user database is only going to issue one command at a time. It's going to issue the command, wait for it to finish, issue the command, wait for it to finish. So there shouldn't be more than one command in there. Okay. But I'm building it this way for future upgradability, so you can launch multiple commands at once. Again, there's, there's lots of reasons why. Just trust me at this point. All right, later on, we can set it up so that the, the, the user machine can lock the server, send a bunch of commands, unlock it, and wait for them to finish running. But for now, just that's, this is the way we're doing it, okay? <laughs> and yes, after I built my prototype database, and after recording a few videos of this, I've thought of like 15 different ways to do this, some, which, some of which may be better, but this, this works. All right. All right. So if not rs.eof, then what we're saying is if there is a record, so it's going to try to open up that record set 
right? If there is no record in there, it's just going to exit out, All right? And if there's no record down this point, right? RS.close, set RS equals nothing. But in the event that there is a record, what do you want to do? All right, we have a command. So let's just see what it is first. Status, executing RS, command, text. What's the text? I want to just see it in my status bar. Again, you can hide this later if you want to, right? Current DB dot execute RS command text. In other words, take that command text that I got sent from the user workstation and run it here. That's the whole, what we're trying to do, right? Get that delete statement and run it here. Get that update statement, that append statement, whatever, run it here. Okay. It's essentially what a database server does. It gets a command from the workstation and executes it but it's executing it locally so it can handle the data here. All right, and then when that's all done, status, complete. And yeah, you can put all kinds of error checking in here, make sure it ran successfully. There's all kinds of things you can do, but we're just keeping it simple for this point right here. Okay, now we have to mark this command as having been finished and executed so that the workstation knows it's done. So rs.edit, rs command completed equals true, rs.update. Okay, so now the workstation will be notified that it's finished. All right, now, as soon as I start this, it's gonna execute that, which I believe there's that delete statement in there. Yeah, there's a delete command in there. So as soon as I start the server, it should see that and run it. So let's make sure that there is, what's in the customer temp? Okay, so there's stuff in customer temp, and the first command is gonna be delete all that stuff. All right, so ready, I'm gonna start the server. And as soon as it ran, look, it got it. It ran the, it executed the statement, it marked it complete, and now it's waiting for commands again. Let's take a look. The command is now marked complete. And if we look in customer temp T, they're gone. See? All right, so this table's clear. So now let's, uh, let me close this. All right, let's go back to the front end database. Okay. I'm gonna put just just manually put some stuff in the customer temp table. All right, so we got just some garbage in here. Okay, so there's some records in customer temp T. Okay, now I'm gonna start up the server. Okay, I'm gonna let you sit over here and I'm gonna let the server go running. So the server's sitting there on its computer over in the corner in the closet, whatever, and it's running. Okay, and now I, on this machine, wanna execute a statement, so I'll hit that get customers, it's sent it, it's waiting over here, look, it got it and it's done. And this guy's marked completed. See, that happened really fast. I sent the command, it went into the command table, this guy got it and ran it, marked it complete, and this guy marked completed. And now, if I look in the customer temp table, that stuff's gone. And that's the power of this. This guy issues the command, this guy runs it. See, now they're talking to each other. All right, now in tomorrow's video, we're gonna finish that and send the second command. We'll delete what's in the customer temp T and then we'll fill it with the data that we want. All right, so come on back tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad channel. We'll continue working on this database. So that's gonna do it for your tech help video for today. That's part four. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button.
you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.